And hello and welcome to IGN's News Games and More, our daily news show that's also about games and more. It's a weird title, but you know, I thought it was New Games and More, but it's not just new games. We talk about old games too. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of that today with my good friends, uh, Bob Marshall. Hey. What's up? Matt Kim. Howdy. And Seth Macy. Hello. All right, so uh, we have a pretty jam-packed show today. Uh, some breaking news just happened, but I should we should we start with that? Is that going to piss everybody off? We'll get to that in a minute. We're, let's talk. Let's talk about something very important today. Uh, the Game Awards nominees were announced um, right here in the middle of November, which is a weird. It's it's always a weird time to do it, uh, and so invariably there are some things that get snubbed and forgotten. Uh, it's also sort of catches a couple of things from the year before. Uh, that missed the cutoff window. So uh, let's get right into it. Obviously, the Game Awards has been going on for a very long time now, um, basically produced and hosted by our, our friend of the show, Jeff Keighley. Uh, really wonderful dude, genuinely cares about video games, also has two phones, which I always think is weird. But, you know, wow. that's, that's when you know he's powerful. Right, you know? right. Two phones. <laughs> Um, the kings and queens of France have two phones, right? <laughs> like when that's uh, that is a modern. It's the modern day version of like when your friend had HBO growing up, and you're like, whoa, <laughs> an ice maker. Whoa, look at this yeah. guy, <laughs> ice maker. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get right into it. game of the year nominees uh, via the Game Awards. Keep in mind, IGN will be doing our own awards uh, towards the end of the year, early next year, right? Um, game of the year nominees for the Game Awards are trying to set it up like an award show animal crossing new horizons doom eternal final fantasy 7 remake ghost of tsushima hades and the last of us part two so right off the bat um i'm gonna say it this is a better year for games than last year was oh yeah this is this like is one of the worst best year. games yeah this is the worst year for literally everything else but this was <laughs> the, the best game. gaming year that i can remember yeah no, right? 2017 was the best gaming year i can remember but Sorry, I didn't mean to be like, you're wrong. Was 2017, 20, 20, 20. 2017 was uh, off the top of my head. Breath of the Wild, uh, oh. Mario Odyssey, Nier uh, Automata, Wolfenstein, ooh. New Colossus, uh, Hollow Knight, I want to say. Ooh, uh, okay. 2017 was pretty packed, if I recall. But this is a good year. This is a good year. I don't remember new consoles coming out in 2000. Oh, wait, yeah, I did the Switch. What am I talking <laughs> about? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> well, we got, a, you know, we got a prequel to Breath of the Wild uh, this Friday. And we got a prequel to Super Mario Odyssey. It's called Super Mario 64. And you can check it out on Nintendo Switch today. <laughs> um, no, those, those, those games were not nominated for anything yet because they came out after the cutoff date. So that's that's important to note, right? Mm -hmm. The cutoff date for the Game the game Awards, do, does anybody know off the top of their head? I feel like it's like, it's any game released, was it November 15th? Because I know Cyberpunk wasn't eligible this year. Yeah, right. Uh, basically, any game that comes out after today will not be eligible because they already announced Dang. the nominations. Right, right. Uh, Does that also disqualify games that came out before today? Like, for example, like would Miles Morales count for next Miles year? Miles Morales or was nominated. Yeah, so Miles Morales uh, and... Let's see if I would I would I, I had the exact same response today, Bob, because I was kind of like, I'm I, I see in your background right now, you're playing Miles Morales. The game is awesome. Play. Like yeah. yeah. It's like it's very it's it very quickly snuck right into my my, my top five, top ten of the year, easily, easily. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not it, it, there are no next gen like dedicated launch games uh in the running for game of the year in this list. Now this is this is based on basically judges votes from all around the industry right like there are there are basically top people at every outlet and you know just, uh, the superheroes of the industry i'm not really sure what the qualifications are maybe <laughs> like if you i don't know if you're like a if you're like a best buy geek squad dude or oh. yeah you have a you know you've done the most trade-ins at gamestop <laughs> um most most playstation trophies i don't know how it works um but this is this is this is a this is not Jeff Keighley just being like my favorite games are right. Yeah. <laughs> Although I would watch that too. Um, so let's see. We also got uh, the nominees for best game direction: Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Half Life, Alex, Last of Us Part Two. Half Life, Alex. I, I saw a lot of discussion, basically saying it was snubbed into the game of the year. Do you guys think that's because it's like it's sort of on an obtuse platform? Like VR is not really front and center in the same way like consoles and PCs are. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I think I even think if it came out on like PSVR, it would have had a better chance of getting in. But uh, like this house, the house that I live in has one uh, 
VR headset to share between me and my roommates, right? Mm -hmm. And like one at the time, now my computer can run it too, but at the time when it came out, only one PC in the house could run it. And so my, my roommate and I did this thing where like, if he was cooking dinner, I would like play Half-Life Alex for like an hour. And then when I was cooking dinner, he would play Half-Life Alex for an hour. And just, right, and just, to, but that was a, but that's just how VR works, right? Like we had one good PC that can run VR games and we had one, you know, $1,200 VR setup in the room, right? And so mm-hmm. just like, and I can't imagine, and like that's because my roommate is the executive ed- uh, editor of tech at IGN, right? I feel like not a lot of people even have that option to, available to them. I would say you're the only person whose roommate is the executive editor of tech, tech at IGN. Yeah, I think you're right. Or he's, he could be living a double life, and but then he'd be paying rent at multiple places. And it's then... true. It'd be weird, yeah. <laughs> but anyway... Uh... <laughs> That's weird. That'd be weird. But yeah, no, it's it's super inaccessible. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I'm with you on that. I, I, I will say like from, from the top looking in, and you guys can feel free to jump in too. Like this is a really cool list because it's um it's a it's a it's not just it doesn't just feel like um like basically big triple A cinematic games. Although it's pretty close, right? Like Animal Crossing is the is the only one that's like you know, this sticks out to me as just sort of like this is this doesn't have a big sweeping story. Doom Eternal doesn't either, but that's obviously a big a big polished you know mm-hmm. 4K next gen you know M rated yeah. AAA game. Um, but then Hades is in there from Supergiant, which is super cool. Like those so very cool. excited. Yeah. Like I, th- I feel like that. I feel like I, that was that was looking at the at the game of the years. That was like my favorite list because I feel like Hades really felt like that word of mouth thing this year that like suddenly like it was it felt like one week you were just hearing about it and suddenly the next week every single person you knew was playing it and playing it over and over and over again and like i think the thing i like about the list it it felt like both that and animal crossing were both just such cultural phenomenons in their way and i like i really love like you know not only saying like these are great games but also like these had like just a massive impact this year like an almost unquantifiable impact especially when we're all stuck at home and i think animal crossing was that first big game of yep. uh quarantine that everybody played and then hades kind of felt like a, a, you know that that thing like later in the year where everybody was just like you have to check out this game it's the most addictive game in the world so i i really loved both of those um making the list especially you- you're totally right, and I think what's really uh, special, specifically about Hades, is that Animal Crossing, Fall Guys, uh, Among Us, um, those those are those are like multiplayer games, right? Like those are games that got people together to be, you know, sort of communal and in in, in a pandemic. And Hades is like single player through and through. Like people were basically just like, oh, this is this is what it's also like. It's it's hardcore. Like it's it's mm-hmm. it's not really like a casual game. Like it's. It's tough. Like people have builds, you know. That's a word a lot of people had to learn this year, right? <laughs> but it's a build. Like, what's what weapon are you? What, what's your, what are you doing on your run? Like, mm-hmm. how many? You know, what's what's your what's your strategies for your runs and stuff like that? So I think you're totally right. Like that's that's a super cool thing about it is that it it kind of cut through the noise of like these very popular kind of social games and it was just like this hardcore ass like action game and yeah. it totally works. Like it it kind of rules. It's a tough game. Like Hades is not easy, right? Like despite mm-hmm. it's it's sort of like uh, a very uh, welcoming art style, which is very cool and stylish. Like it's mechanically very hard, and there are some people who it takes like fifty plus runs in order to get their first clear, right? But at the same time, because of how compelling it was, people stuck by it. Like people didn't rage quit or anything. Right. One of my favorite Hades oh, no. moments this year uh, was uh, sorry. Um, I just wanted. To... One of my favorite Hades moments this year was um, Josh Dew on the social team once during like an all company all hands did not realize his camera was on his uh, <laughs> computer. So you just sort of suddenly saw his switch drifting in the frame. <laughs> and we were just like, we were like, dude, dude, you're on camera. Dude, like everybody can see you. Dude, people are looking at you. Dude. And he's and like <sighs> afterwards, all he said back after like everybody DM'd him, he just said, Hades. And we're like, dude, that, that is that is a 2020 uh, remix of like sneaking a Game Boy Advance in the in the class and I'm just kind of like <laughs> hiding behind the book. I love that people are doing that. Not um, to be crass, but there are there are worse things people have accidentally done on the webcam during work yeah, stuff this yeah, year. Yeah, like yeah, playing rest- Hades is not even a bad thing comparatively. Rest in peace to Jeff Jeffrey Tubin or whatever. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> on uh Twitch, Positive Abyss Lord says, I hope Final Fantasy VII remake 
takes every category. It's in Over Last of Us 2. Such an underrated game. I got bad news for you, Positive Abyss Lord. The Last of Us 2 is probably going to win. No, I, I think I Hades think has a good shot. Oh, man. I mean, so I don't... that. I'm glad we're speculating this. I honestly... My gut reaction looking at this list is that Animal Crossing was like a cultural mm. phenomenon this year yeah. on the level of Pokemon Go. And I think it hit different because it we were we were all stuck inside. And it was this happy, saccharine, joyous thing that we all collectively jumped in on. And mm. it it was this it was like one of the most perfectly timed sort of like slivers mm. of escapism I think I've ever seen in in the history of this medium. Like the the amount of times that like great games have come out in a time where like the world needs them has definitely happened a lot but this this year man like when animal crossing hit i've never seen that 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 moved that moved mountains like people people who have never touched a video game before people who haven't played video games in 20 30 years mm -hmm. they were like they were hitting me up they're the you know anecdotally all over social media posting pictures for the first time like we did we did um, like a, a a bunch of like charity live streams on IGN where I was interviewing people that I've wanted to talk to my entire life and they were showing me around their Animal Crossing town. <laughs> you know, like stuff yeah. like that, it's like bizarre. Like that's obviously all anecdotal, but I think there's something to be said about that. Um, but I I do see Hades sort of having the same sort of like I, you can make that same exact argument for that, right? Yeah, I think yeah. I think you bring up a good point is that these nominations kind of divide themselves into two camps. It's just like there's on one end, you know, the standard like really polished AAA experiences that kind of make it into Game of the Year nominations contentions every year, right? Then you get Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima. The other games where even if they're not as polished, they basically dominated the conversations for months or weeks on end because of external forces, right? Like for animal crossing because of of covid and like what it did during the early days and then hades because of just a fan community that built itself around this game right um so you know I, is so uh, let me let me ask let me ask the room is there is there anyone uh here that like looks at this list and immediately sees a game that they don't think belong there because i that's how i feel about doom eternal which i think is, is yeah, yeah no i don't yeah. That it's good. Little... It's 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 totally good. Like, but I think that like the previous one was better, and I also think that like it kind of came and went. Like to mm. me, I I don't think that I think that like a game like Ghost of Tsushima, which by the way, um, like for different reasons, the photo mode in that game was oh was some of the most consistently beautiful stuff to see on social media for the entire summer. Right? Like mm -hmm. yeah. you would be scrolling through social media and it would just be like horrible crap happened again today everywhere. And then someone would be like, I'm in a field. There's a Fox, <laughs> <You'd be> like, <laughs> yeah, <all right." laughs> you know, like, and last of us too, obviously, you know, I mm -hmm. had a lot of controversy about it. Uh, but I, I absolutely loved it. But to me, yeah, that's uh, like, are, are we on the same page there? I, I saw some arguments about, about, about final fantasy seven, about not being like the complete experience, but all right. Uh, no, I'm with you. I think if I, if I, you know, gun to my head, if you're like, hey, replace one with another, right? I would probably say I would switch out Doom Eternal with Half Life Alex is mm. what I would do. Um, yeah. but I like I liked Doom Eternal, but the but you basically said it is I just like Doom 2016 way way more. Yeah, you know, uh, I think Doom Eternal is a fine game, but Doom 2016 is just still that peak, and Eternal Dang. did not summit it. Yeah, I would I would swap Doom Eternal with Miles Morales, which um, Miles Morales got nominated for best performance and for best action game. So people know it; they know it exists. <laughs> it's, it's out there. It's in the it's, it's in the ether. Yeah, they've it's, seen it. They know it. They've played it. One would assume you have it. You're not. You didn't break an NDA. You're not a time traveler. Like it's out. <laughs> it's not for. Uh, it'll be a week tomorrow that it's out. But um, I guess that's not enough time for these. You know. Game journalists mm -hmm. to beat an eight-hour game because they're just bad at games. <laughs> I, think, I think the other things too. I mean, the other thing that I would make the argument too with Miles, like throwing Miles Morales on that list too, is that um, I mean, when we this is something that we chronicled on the social team yesterday in terms of uh, you know just kind of looking around the Twitter conversation was that like the other thing that you're seeing with Miles Morales is like the 
I guess like just the talk, like the culture around it is just sort of beginning. Like its impact is just starting to be felt. And obviously not everybody who wants to be playing Miles Morales in PS5 can because not that many people got PS5s, a lot of people. But you're just kind of starting to see like the tip of the iceberg. I think the, the really cool thing that we saw initially in for talking about games that have had a lot of impact, you're starting to see Miles Morales and like the amount of people talking about you know, the great representation the game has with, um, you know, showcasing like the Afro Puerto Rican community in New York and like just New York Ricans generally, uh, the Dominican community in New York, Spanish Harlem, you're just sort of now seeing like all these people being like, wow, this game, there are just so many levels to this game that like feel really pure and like really, you know, are really registering with people. I mean, like, I'll tell you, I mean, this is my own personal story. Uh, the most emotional I definitely got playing a game this year was the first time firing, firing up Miles Morales and being like, oh, like I just moved from New York to LA like three weeks ago. And I immediately yeah. was just like, oh my God, like I miss mm -hmm. New York so much. And this game ca captured this feeling of like New York at Christmas. And I'm like, we're not going to have this this year, but thank oh God, God we have this game that will give us that at least in some way. Right. Thank, thank you so much for saying that. Honestly, like I, um, I, 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 I lived in New York for for uh, like for five five years. I went to preschool there. I went to college there, and I go back constantly because I have friends and family. And I haven't. The, that's the last time I traveled anywhere was I went to my brother's wedding in New York City around Christmas time last year. And so I have like such a, a like such an affinity for that. And the moment the game kind of re released control of the cutscenes and let you start swinging, I just had like chills. I was just like overtaken with emotion because I was like, this is awesome. Like this is such a special thing. Uh, especially this year. And I did have this weird moment where I was like, nobody's wearing masks, <laughs> <laughs> which is, you know, like I'm, my brain is still training to learn the escapism. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I, I'm totally with you, man. That was so special. And I, I think people are going to be uncovering it for a long time. It does show up like um, it, it shows a part of New York City that I don't think is usually depicted uh, in pop culture. Like usually I, I feel like when you look at like the the, you know, the black or Hispanic populations in New York city and their communities there, it's usually shown in like a negative light. There's like crime movies, there's rap albums and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I love all those things. Or they just show like all these, like, you know, like affluent people in Rockefeller center ice skating, which like no New Yorker does. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I do, I, I do hope it gets, it gets more love as it goes on. Um, one thing I did want to talk about was uh, that weird sort of like area between uh, last year and this year. So with the cutoff date being where it is, this year um, we're, it's cutting off Cyberpunk. Last year it cut off Fallen Order, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is like, I think is like a really awesome game. It's also like totally like an 8.5, yeah. like, you know? But I love it's it. I love it. Solid so experience. Totally, totally. And I think that like, like last year, I think it would have had a really good chance of at least being in the running for Game mm -hmm. of the Year. I don't know so much this year, um, but it, it seems like it's, you know, like it, when when games come out late that late, uh, which I believe happened with Smash Brothers a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. they, they they end up in this weird window where we're talking about them a year later. And I had to clarify to a bunch of people on Twitter today. I was just like, no, the game came out right after the cutoff date, but it is eligible this year. Yep. But it wasn't because it wasn't as good as some of the other games that they decided they were, you know. So mm -hmm. like, how do you guys feel about that whole thing? Because I, I do think it's it gets a bit confusing. I mean, what can you do? <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> games come out it. when they come out, you know, if, they, if they're qualified. You can delay qualified, the award. And it's like, it's not uh, that game's fault that 2020 just had like, yeah. Ton, I think we gave out like more 10s this year than in like any other. I don't know if that's true, but I gave out my first <clears> 10 this year in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which was snubbed because that's mm. my personal pick mm. for best game of the year. But that's hey. right. Yeah. What a what a what a goddamn miss it was to not have that on the Series X at launch. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, what a miss. <laughs> yeah. Um any any last thoughts on the game awards before we move on? I do want to get to uh I do want to get to Wonder Woman if we can skip over to that because I think yeah. that's big. But any last thoughts on the game awards? Looking forward to the winner. Should be yeah, fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and remember, IGN will do awards as well. Uh, I think ours are in late December. December. Yep. Yeah. And so we will try to en encompass everything that happened this year. Not to compete. Everybody's got their thing. Jeff the, Keighley, gets a, he has an orchestra. We, we do not have an orchestra. The real game awards were the friends we made along the way. That is true. That is and true. eventually the enemies at work we will make when we argue over game of the year. <laughs> <laughs>
right? Uh, okay, so this this is crazy. This story just broke a few minutes ago. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984, which uh, had been delayed multiple times this year because of the pandemic, um, is coming to theaters on Christmas Day, but also HBO Max, day Ooh. one, no additional cost. Uh, all you need is an HBO Max subscription and a device that will play it, which is the hardest part. <laughs> right. Because nothing... Uh, Bob, you got to get a PS5 behind you. Can you boot up that HBO yeah, Max I, app? Uh, no, you know, I have it on my PS4. That's right. Oh, that's yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reason I still have my PS4, uh, like, seriously, that is the reason I still have my PS4 plugged in. You know, you never know when Wonder Woman's just going to pop up and you're going to have to watch it. Great. <laughs> Um, the director of the film, Patty Jenkins, says, the time has come. At some point, you have to choose to share any love and joy you have to give over everything else. We love our movie as we love our fans. We truly hope that our film brings a little bit of joy and reprieve to all of you this holiday season. Watch it in theaters where it is made safe to do so. Check out the great work theaters have done to make it so. And available in the safety of your home on HBO Max where it is not. What? Uh, what? I think, well, I think she's saying if there are no safe theaters in your area. Oh, I thought she said oh. my house wasn't safe. <laughs> yeah, it, no. was, it was. Yeah, that wording was also. I was like, watch what? out, Patty Santa Jenkins. Claus what do you? Might still be call is coming from inside the house. What, <laughs> what do you know about my home? <laughs> watch it. Watch it in a theater, in a tube, or stay home with your sick coughing uncle and roll the dice. <laughs> Happy holidays to all of you. We hope you enjoy our film as much as we enjoyed making it. That is a weird quote. Um, See, so yeah, this is huge. Uh, we've. We, Previously seen this uh, being experienced uh, or experimented with a couple of um, different movie studios throughout the year. We saw Trolls 2 or 3, I don't oh, care, yeah. um, which was by all means uh, like a rousing success financially. We saw also saw yeah. Scoob, um, which somehow made my child addicted to Scooby-Doo. I don't oh, That's a weird okay. thing. Huh. Um, and then we saw it with Mulan most recently, which was oh, a very yeah. like, it felt kind of gross, right? Like it was yeah. 30 bucks on top of the Disney Plus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. even very. It wasn't even very good. Right. I love. I love good. Mulan. Wasn't right. Very good. Did not hold a candle to the cartoon. Like I love Mulan, the 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 2000s, 1990 animated movie. This was weird. Lot yeah. of strange decisions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a bummer, but I mean, I think that this is um, this is really awesome news, and I think that this is something we're going to be seeing more and more of. Uh, the, yeah. I imagine that these studios are looking at the real news and they're going, we gotta like, we gotta, we gotta do something with our movie. Like there's yeah. a lot of, I think this is what makes me happy about this is I, I think that uh, they're going to, they're going to look at, they're going to track the, the success of this thing, mm -hmm. um, which by the way, HBO max needs like HBO max on the tier of, or the hierarchy of like subscription based yeah. is, is at the bottom, right? Cause it's the newest. Um, the peacock's definitely at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> there are a lot. Yeah, there are. And R.I.P. to Quibi. Uh, yes, and Quibi. And there's Quibi. also, yeah. It's, I think it's nuts, right? Because uh, in terms of subscription <laughs> numbers, HBO Max is trailing behind Disney Plus and Netflix. But in terms yeah. of, like, content, HBO Max it's has so a lot good. of lot of movies yeah. and shows. And mm -hmm. it's really, really good. Um, but, yeah, I think this would be a great way to get those numbers up, you know, get those, get those subscribers up. What Matt said, like, I think in terms of overall content, like, far and away, HBO Max is the best streaming app. The problem is the actual app kind of sucks, and it breaks yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a test if you're, you know, whoever works Ooh, yeah. at, on HBO Max, where you're basically like, everybody go watch one of the biggest movies of the year, a sequel to a much beloved movie. Um, mm -hmm. You've been waiting forever for this. Now mm -hmm. we're all going to log into HBO Max at the exact same time on Christmas <laughs> yeah. Day. How is this gonna go? Do you remember? I mean, even watching like a, the HBO Now or Go apps on the night mm -hmm. of like Game of Thrones, it was just a total crapshoot. Oh um, my god! Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. I've said I've said this before. Nobody has had an easier year than the guy who is in charge of putting HBO Max on on stuff. Like yeah. that, it's just like if you feel bad about like those days where like you don't shower till three or like you know <laughs> like check emails from the couch while watching TV instead of going to work. Man, that dude. Vacation island for him. Um, <laughs> no, so uh, digging into the press release here is interesting. They said um, it, the film will be available for a month on HBO Max in the U.S., included at no additional cost as subscribers. So it's 
it's really it's a one month exclusive on that app Mm -hmm. um and then you i i guess it'll just still be in theaters i guess they i mean speculating i feel like they might want to double dip with home purchases right so they do one month of exclusive and then three two or three months on the line they're like now available for purchase on amazon or or or, you know wherever so maybe they're trying to maybe it yeah i is more is my guess i mean i that's a wild thing to do so right um i i so i did you guys you read, read that story yesterday about like this sort of like 31 day window with like theater exclusivity and mm-hmm. stuff like that um i wonder how that plays into this because this is day and day in theaters and at home at the same time yeah uh, i would love to see that going forward like i think tenet was too confusing to spoil so mm. most of the people like, <laughs> Most of the people who went to it were, were just like, I think it was good. I liked it. And they, they couldn't, you know, it wasn't like they came home and they're like, Obi-Wan dies or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I saw Tenet. Um, I, I'll tell you exactly why no one can spoil it because it's nonsense. It's so fun <laughs> and so enjoyable. Um, but it's utter nonsense. It's such nonsense that in the beginning, um, the actress who plays Fleur Delacour, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name, explains to John David Washington that sometimes uh, bullets go in reverse. And uh, she's like, he's like, what? And she's like, don't try to think about it. And that's pretty much the premise of the whole movie. It's like, the more you think about this, the more this movie kind of unravels. But it was wow. really enjoyable. A lot of cool backwards stuff happened. Like, honestly, if you want to see some really cool backwards stuff happen and not really understand what's going on, go see Tenet. When it comes out on, oh. uh, in, on Blu-ray in December. Yeah, uh, while we're while we're on this kind of thing, this is a slight tangent. Uh, Christopher Nolan likes lampshade hanging as a. I think it's like his way of trying to be fun with like, hey, sometimes these ideas are too crazy to make sense, right? But they just come off as like admitting that his ideas are kind of dumb, right? Like I think in Inception, <laughs> they're like, they're like, whose dream are we in? It's like, oh, it doesn't matter. And I'm and I thought that that was like a joke, right? But looking back on it, I'm like, kind of really doesn't matter, you know? I'm like, whose dream? Who cares? <laughs> The vibe I get from Tenet specifically is it's Christopher Nolan being like, I've thought about this really hard and I'm really, really smart. And I get this and you don't because you're not as smart as me. So I'm just not even going to try to explain it to you. And you try to follow along if you can. Meanwhile, well, I imagine imagine none of this is going to happen in Wonder Woman 1984, where like the biggest plot twist will be that Christopher Pine or whatever gets. Like Cyclops get hit gets hit with a Rubik's cube or something. <laughs> <laughs> Saddest part is all those Doritos from June are now stale. Oh, do you remember how they they put they had like a, a tie in with Doritos, and so in oh, June yeah. they were just like in theaters now, and it was Doritos with Wonder Woman 1984, and those are long gone, and they're not coming back. It's the same oh, okay. with like uh, like the Halo Doritos or the Halo yeah, Mountain yeah, Dew or whatever yeah, it was. You wash, it, wash it down with the Halo Mountain Dew and like the, I don't know, there's like Ghostbusters gummies that you can get in alternate dimension 2020 when movies oh, came out like normal times. Remember that? Well, I guess you wouldn't remember that because it was an alternate dimension. Um, speaking of movies, a thing you can do uh, if you get a next-gen console is watch movies on there because there really aren't a ton of launch games right now. But there aren't even a ton of next-gen consoles. Like these things are impossible to get. So Seth, uh, yeah. you are on our commerce team. You are at, true. damn near the top of our commerce team. I think you have to fight one. By day. God, you'll be running. I oversee it. the day-to-day operations of IGN's commerce operations. All right. Uh, operations. So for the Operate. love of God, please give us some good news. Tell me that some next-gen consoles will be in stock soon. I got some great news for you. All right. Tomorrow, <gasps> three p.m. Walmart Online will have PlayStation Five. You live, in, you live in Maine. What's three p.m.? Why that would be noon, <laughs> your time. Uh, we'll have PlayStation Five, PlayStation Five Digital, Xbox Series X, and Xbox Series S available and PS- for PS4, the PSP Go. Those will be all over the place. You can get those <laughs> by the bucket load, but they will be available uh, to buy online only at Walmart for about three seconds. Oh wow. People get really frustrated, and I understand because it's a very frustrating thing, and they take it out on me on tw- on the IGN Deals Twitter, which you should follow because yeah. it's great. And uh, you got to just keep <clears throat> trying when it boots you out. Don't just go on Twitter and yell at me. Mm-hmm. Like, keep refreshing your cart, and it, it, that's what I had to do. Mm-hmm. And now I'm, you know, after this, I'm going to go play Demon's Souls on my PS5 because you got to just keep, you just got to keep at it. But the better news is exactly one week. Uh, 
from today, which is the day before Thanksgiving at 7 p.m. Eastern time, which is 4 p.m. Pacific. Same story at Walmart online. You'll be able to throw the dice and try your luck at getting a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. Follow IGN deals because we are we put those out the second they, they can. And Bob has his team like retweeted on the IGN and it goes to 8 million people. Mm-hmm. And then they all come into my mentions on the on, and tell me that I'm a bad person because they didn't get one. Because it's your what's what's it that is. handle for people who want to follow the IGN deals account? Why well, that's at IGN deals. All right. Nice. Yeah, follow that. Um, because you will in the brief window between Seth being like, Bob, check this out, retweet it, and and six billion people finding it. That's your that's your, you know, that's the that's the one you gotta sneak through right there. Like that's yeah. that's the so spot. You- People who are interested, not only follow I- at IGN Deals on Twitter, but turn your notifications on. So whenever IGN t- Deals tweets, you get a notification so you know. This is mm-hmm. how I saw today when the Xbox Series Xs were available for an extremely brief window on Microsoft.com. Yeah. No one else would have known unless you were following the IGN Deals account and reacting within um, a second. I almost crashed my car. I try not to look at things, but I got a, <laughs> I got a notification. And I had to send it to my buddy who's been just looking for one so like just so badly and he missed it because the Microsoft store crashed because it's terrible. But, hey, yes. That's TJ Wallace on YouTube says he got both his consoles due to Seth and IGN. Oh yes. Oh that's, that's TJ, kind of what's like. up? That is the kind of news we want to hear. Uh, that's no, what this, I like. So this this is this is I've been this is like a bit of a very strenuous process from the jump. Like from the second PS5 was like or place it, Sony was like, hey, we're making a PS5, and here's what it looks like, and here's how much you can get it for it, and you can pre-order it. Uh, oh, crap, everyone put it up online already. That happened, and then Xbox was like, we're not going to do what those dirty bastards over there did. We're going to put it up at 9 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> you can get it. It's going to be super easy. And their store broke, and all the websites crashed. Oh, my God. That was a, it was just a nightmare. And I, I, went, like, I went crazy and just like started pre-ordering as many places as I could, and uh, then canceled all the duplicate ones. Mm. And basically... The the PS5 and the Series X showed up, but I didn't actually believe like I didn't believe that that was a thing until I had them in my hands. Yeah, so, right. Oh yeah. yeah. So I be patient. Just... Godspeed. As as a sneakerhead, like you 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 learn to fight the robots. Mm-hmm. Like you will, you will have to beat the robots. They will always try to kill you. Um, yeah. People F5 are really F5. mad about the robots, and my recommendation to that is. Google a Python script and you can write your own. It's actually really easy. I haven't done it yet, but I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, don't beat it. If you can't beat them, join them. That's right. the, uh, speaking of sneakerheads, that's how I got my PS5. I got from a sneakerhead Twitter account. No offense. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, look, somebody in the comments said, uh, follow Wario64 way better. I mean, yeah, Wario's great. Like, he's pretty much what everybody aspires to be. I'm not saying just follow us. If you really want to follow everybody, follow yeah. like, like, yeah. uh, cheap ass games and uh, mm-hmm. like that, the uh, sneakerheads and dirty you know, dance deals. You got to dirty dance, <laughs> dangling deals. Yeah, totally, just, totally legit totally. console emporium. Don't yeah. you don't follow that one actually. <laughs> you know, if you really, really want a PlayStation Five, go to this website called eBay.com. Oh, that's right. And they got them. Yeah, you're gonna pay, but they got them. Dude, I I looked that up today because uh, we did a video on this on on uh, up at noon last week. Because the PS5 consoles were going for two thousand dollars, like routinely. Like if you clicked on how many, like dozens and dozens sold. And then we, I checked in today, and they're like fifteen hundred bucks. So still three times the price, but it's coming down. So yeah. by this logic, uh, three weeks might be able to buy retail PS5 for a right. retail on eBay four seventy nine. Do you see, that? Do you see <laughs> that guy on Twitter who is like? Look at all my PS. He had like a, ru- a basement full of yeah. them, right? And he's like, "This is just the first shipment." And he had like his real name or something on as his as his like Twitter <laughs> handle. Ooh. And everybody was just, everybody was just like, "Hey man, you're like the worst guy I know on the internet." And then he's like, "You know, suck it, haters. I have like a million PS 5s Dude, he he filmed videos of like the DHL truck pulling up to his house with his like his whole street in the view. Yeah, like, man, but, like. But like these aren't sneakers, right? Like they're gonna keep making them forever and ever until yeah, the next generation, right? right? Like they're not. They've got like seven or eight years worth of exactly. these. Exactly. Like there are some sneakers where they make like a hundred and never make it again, and that's <laughs> something that maybe you try to get more of. But these are you guys, five. They're gonna go and say. Do you guys see that picture of uh? This is like eight, I think eight years ago today, honestly, 
Um, the, when the Wii U launched, there was that, it was like a woman, uh, she was like this housewife and she, she like filled the back of her car with Wii U's and put her like eBay handle on this like print piece of printer paper. Mm -hmm. And she's just standing there in these like mom jeans being like, hey, this is gonna, I got the sequel to the Wii. This is gonna be a hit. <laughs> Um, if you see more, uh, her picture today, it's the she has the same amount of Wii U's <laughs> in the yeah. back of her car. But you know what? She's, She's, she has they, not been able to move her car in eight in eight years because it's been just weighed down by Wii U's. The Wii U's so, are actually like di didn't they spiked in price recently? I love that we made a run a show. I just don't care anymore. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the Wii U's, like, yeah, they 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 went up a lot, right? Oh yeah, really? That's uh, interesting. I didn't know that. So I. Uh, I think she, I, maybe she. I think it's because it's the only way to play Wind Waker HD right yeah, now. Yeah. Is, yeah, for now, yeah. Uh, I, um, no, I think the Wii U will have does have like collector value, value the same way that I guess the Virtual Boy does. You mm -hmm. know, like they're going, they're going for like a hundred fifty bucks. It's not really. It's not even bad. Wow. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, can I also just make a, make a PSA for people buying still looking to buy next gen consoles too? And I just am putting this out there because I learned the hard way. Walmart will not let you change your address after you order. No. Oh no, there. that's right. Yeah, because you changed your address. I tried, dude. I, tried. So you, tried. I, I same same as you. I just moved recently, um, and I I pre-ordered the next gen consoles in a frantic, paranoid flurry, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't put in my new address in any of them. And I had a, like a lot of hard, long conversations with people uh, at, at customer support, and they were like, no. Yep. What what can you do? We're just gonna yeah. we're gonna drop a five hundred dollar uh, machine in front yeah. of a building you don't live at anymore in the rain, and then you know good luck. when you when you come to see it. Good, good luck, luck. <laughs> good luck. That's what Wait, happened to me. So uh, that's where my Xbox Series X went. Um, canceled my PS Five. I was like, I can't cancel this. I need it. I'll figure out some way. And then it just I, they said once it ships, we can call FedEx for you, and we'll do a three way call with you and FedEx to try to get it back. So it shipped at like 3 a.m. on release day. I was asleep. I woke up at 6, called them, and they're like, it's already been delivered to your place, to your apartment. In Brooklyn. And I'm like, wow. I don't live there. No one lives there anymore. And they're like, okay, what we can do is we can, we can issue a return tag. And I'm like, great. I'm also going to call my old super. People I know who live in the building say, can you grab this for me and just hold it and then like mail it out the next day. I'll pay you to do it. Anything you can do. They went back the next day. I super did went into the package room. It was gone. And I called no! over and I was just like, where, where, where? And they were like, it's gone. Like it says it was delivered. It's just gone. Luckily, they did issue me a refund because they saw I had called them like eight times to figure this oh, out. There's nothing they could do to help God. me. So they issued me a refund, which was great. But I have no idea where that PS5 is. And then luckily, <laughs> Jeffrey Vega on the IGN social team just kind of hit me up. He's like, I bought an extra PS5 on Target. Do you want to come grab it? And I was just like, you are the best person I know. So shouts to Jeffrey because I, that is, I did that that is how I got mine. That, no, that's an amazing story. I, I, aside from the stolen PS5. I hope that went in a, a good home. A good hand, I mean, yeah. Like yeah. a thief that loves video. I mean, yeah. like if it's in your apartment's mail room, like if we're going to say the quiet part out loud, it's probably one of your old roommates or old apartment neighbors. <laughs> Ooh, totally. Super. Yeah. Like, super himself. Yeah. Is that for that PS5? I didn't tell him it was a PS5. I didn't trust anybody. I didn't tell anybody it was a PS5. I was like, mm -hmm. there's a big important box. It's for me. Please don't look at it. Please <laughs> send it to me. And it's like, it's gone. I don't know. Your big important box is gone. We don't know. So <laughs> I can't confirm because it's on my phone and my phone's being a jerk, but I think the Xbox Series X just came back into stock at Microsoft. So hey. go go to the IGN Deals Twitter and there's a link there. And I'm All sorry, right. I can't help you better, but I'm gonna uh, shoot that to, to Max Scoville because I know he's been looking for one of those. Um, uh, when oh, Maxi boy, yeah, right. When well, I, I just went, I went to his Twitter account to be like, "Oh, here's your Twitter account." <laughs> 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 Let's go look in a mirror. Um, no, when I, I actually uh, ended up ordering a second PS5 that got delivered that I forgot to cancel from Walmart, and I immediately um, gave it to a coworker at IGN. Uh, on the social team for four times the price, which was, I felt fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, I, now he Venmoed me the exact amount and showed up and bought it. And I was thinking about how the night the Nintendo Switch came out, mine got delayed by like four days. And a friend of mine, Jared Petty, 
uh, former IGN editor, um, got a second switch delivered, and I drove an hour to his house in the rain to get it. And I I think that's a good thing to do. Like if you mm-hmm. if you can afford to pre-order second console and kick it to a friend who who couldn't get one, that's that's a good look. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the bad news is I just did check and it's not in stock. Oh, sorry, know. everybody. And meanwhile, all of our viewership is just dropping. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, yeah, they can keep the video up and the Microsoft Store. It's doable. That yes. Um, I, I let's uh, let's do one last story uh, because this is a very very funny one. Um, Bob, we were talking about how much we love Spider-Man Miles Morales. It's it's a super great game. It's incredibly polished. It's, I would say, like one of the best looking games I've ever played. And Insomniac has said that they're just barely tapping the potential of the PS5, which is awesome. But <laughs> it's an open world video game, so it's got funny nonsense glitches in it. <laughs> Such as uh, this weird collision glitch that is causing players to uh, become the objects that they are swinging into. Uh, so several players have noticed that they have become a trash can, a brick, a pile of snow, uh, a lamp post. Mm-hmm. I don't want this to get patched out at all. This no. is great. I want this to be. An, they should make an alternate costume. I want to play the whole game as a trash can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have be, played all of 2020 as a huge pile of trash. Yeah, so be, on, be on the outside how you feel on the inside. <laughs> I mean, a, a garbage a garbage can beating up people in 2020 is pretty it's, much uh, like that's, 2020. Yeah, that's our peak mood. That is somewhere. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, this is a trash. beating heart of a trash can right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's I like I'm, I want to see it. I want to see it in combat. Swinging mm-hmm. is one thing, but. <laughs> This, uh, is funny this, this, it just you just don't see where the web is coming from. It just sort of comes from like, right. the air somewhere. Um, yeah. The best is the brick because it's so small. And oh, the brick yeah, is maybe my favorite because it's <laughs> just tiny it. and like it's just the best seeing like the villains lo- just look so confused. But yeah, this is this, <clears> the snow pile, which is uh, it's yeah, it's like also a little brick of snow. Um, and I don't even know what's going on in this clip right now. Brick, it's, it's good. The brick climbing up the wall is like my favorite thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the the snow cloud I, it makes me want like a third person action adventure Lakitu mm. game where he's just oh like, dude yeah um, oh. yeah no it, it looks awesome uh, the Denver eight in the YouTube chat says can you play as a puddle Ooh. oh I see oh, nice oh so, oh you can be a t shirt or a house <laughs> <laughs> it's oh my god dude, this house is oh it's just the top of a church. <laughs> they, uh, it they like a uh, gingerbread house. <laughs> they make so many post-release like outfits for Spider-Man. They got they have to lean into this. It's so good. Oh man, I just if this had come out earlier, that would have been like the Halloween costume in a mm. in, in a yep. year where 2020 didn't have like people like oh hey look at me I'm the the house from Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, Poke Iwan on YouTube says this reminds me of Tofu from Resident Evil. Tofu, yeah. unlockable character in Resident Evil, but that was like deliberate, right? Like the yep. developers yeah. put that in there. This yeah. is total. This is totally a glitch. Which God, it's so funny. It's the best oh, glitch. I love it. I feel like I mean, did you guys see the you guys saw the like the boat people thing? Yep. Oh yeah. yeah, no, uh, I only saw the brick in the trash can. Oh no, no. So, um, <laughs> Matt, in uh, 2018, when Spider Man uh, came out for PS4, mm-hmm. um, in like the first week or two, if you went down to the docks and swung by the boats, there are these people on the boats that looked like N64, like, yeah, oh. Golden Eye, Golden Eye DK yeah. mode, and they like <laughs> these like flat, <laughs> cool, polygonal nightmare faces. Mm-hmm. Um, so they patched them out. But uh, if you play uh, Spider-Man Remastered on PS5 or PS4, I, be- I believe, wherever it is, um, and swing down there, they're back. There's like one guy there, and he has a, a little post-it note on his shirt that said, like, did you miss us? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like this 4K ray-traced HDR, <laughs> you know, p- polygon. 64 man. Yeah. I could be right, wrong, but I think right. you actually might get a trophy for interacting with them. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. oh really? Oh, man, that's super so. cool. I, I want to do that. Um, but yeah, let let us know uh, which um, inanimate object you want to play Spider-Man Miles Morales <laughs> as. Um, I I I would love. I actually would love a car. Just that would be really yeah, fun. Yeah, that'd be excellent. Uh, 
streaming through the streets as a car. Um, but that just about wraps us up for today. Uh, thank you, Bob. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Seth. This was a blast. This was super, super fun. Um, and thanks to everybody on YouTube and Twitch for watching along with us today. This is News Games Tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow with another show uh, and playing more video game coverage on IGN and YouTube and Twitch and everywhere else you get your stuff from us. Um, and also Dirty Dan's Deals website, which you should follow on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Just made that up. Um, good luck getting an X-Gen console. Thank you to all my friends for joining me today, and we'll see you all tomorrow. All right.